Okay, everybody. Um, hello and welcome. Are you enjoying the show so far? Yes? Yeah? yeah? Great. Okay, cool. Um, we're now heading to another talk, uh, this time from Matt and Marcus. Matt is from South Africa and Marcus from Belgium. They two work on quite interesting projects. Before that, I just want to mention one thing. Um, outside, you have the exhibition area of some of the sponsors. There are some more except, um, extensions upstairs if you go the stairs up into the very edge. And these extensions also are very eager to present their solutions, so you might have a look at that later on. So now I'm handing over to Marcus. Hello. Hi. Well, I'm Marcus, Marcus Peebles. I live in Belgium. I'm Chilean, but I'm also a little bit Belgian. I do websites since like, uh, I don't know, more than 10 years, and I work with Matthew like for five years. Yes. Uh, we met at a, in a forum, PHP, WCMS, another CMS, and he convinced me to switch to Joomla. So he's the culprit <laughs> for me being here. So we're here to talk about J and beyond, right? And what's cooking north and south, or south and north. So I'm not native English, so excuse my French. If I say the F word, <laughs> Nispa. <laughs> And I'll let Matt uh, introduce himself also. Hi, my name is Matthew. Um, I'm also not a native English speaker. <laughs> um, I've been involved in the online industry for 11 years. My company's been running for 11 years. Started in Germany, and we're back in South Africa. Um, started off with this fantastic system called WCMS, and was working with Mumbo in the days, and have gone through this whole cycle of learning the different systems right to the point where we are at the moment. We've built some amazing sites. Um, the systems that are available from the developers that are here today and over the next two days, they're producing some amazing systems that we've been able to, to put together. So there's no shortage of solutions we find and uh, we think that we can do any design that's presented to us and use Joomla as a tool to solve any client's um, issues that they might have. So yeah, next slide. So, uh I said that Matt was the culprit for getting me into Joomla, and um, as seen on TV, you know, on Brian Tiemann, who is here. Mm -hmm. um, this is a little bit, uh, as we're talking about non-profit and governmental websites, or government websites. Um, we see here, so that was a post last Friday, and we are Sunday, that uh, Africa holds, these are official government sites, so it's not like a, um, a prime minister's sites or whatever, official sites of uh, governments. And we see in red there, over there, that Africa has seven sites running Joomla. So that's quite a lot. And actually, Joomla is the most used CMS in the world for governments, open source at least. Open source. So that was a little bit uh, what's cooking south and north. South, they're using Joomla. That's a fact. At least on a governmental, sorry? On the continent. On the continent, exactly. Yes? So, we start with the obvious, the speed. Uh, I work in Belgium, so we have quite nice connections. Matthew, on the contrary, has to deal with some other problems about speed. Yes, you can go. And so last week we did, you can go to the next slide, last week we did this little screenshot. Guess who's in Africa and who's in Belgium. I have the nice screen and he has that, uh, it was a nice screen back then, the Philips. And um, now it's a Photoshop thing, but it looks good. He, it takes Matthew 32 minutes to download an 800 meg file and it takes me seven minutes. So when he needs to upload a full website, you imagine I'm four times as effective as he is. It's not true. Well, actually, it is not. It's not. Uh, so we did this little speed test, and um, you see that he has to work with 039 on upload k okay, uh, per second, and I have 1.2.3 meg. This was in the middle of the afternoon. Mm. At night, we get better speeds. So you see, it's not only downloading, it's also uploading. We, as web 
designers, builders need to upload a lot of uh, things. So the upload is important for us. So Matthew has to deal with a lot of things there in South Africa. Right. Um, what we did was we, had a, we took a, a short comparison, the differences between Europe and Africa. And you could probably put the US in line with, with uh, Europe as well. But just some of the things that affect us when we're down working in South Africa. Um, the first one, and it's the most important one for us, is that uh, we still have caps on our ADSL. So in other words, when you get an ADSL account, you have three gigs, and that's it. If you want more, you buy more gigs. So we don't have unlimited accounts, and that actually affects us quite, quite a bit. Um, our office averages 20 gigs a month. If we go over 20 gigs, we have to buy more. It's, it's as simple as that. Um, in Europe, I mean, where we've been, I mean, we've worked this whole week in Brussels, and Dwight has downloaded um, a whole lot of programs which are sitting over a gig. So we've utilized our free internet quite seriously here. It would be great to do it here at the conference, but they've capped it for some reason. I think it's got to do with the users. Um, the next thing, which is also an important one, is the speed. Our infrastructure in South Africa is very old, and uh, the distances are very great between cities. So to go and lay fiber optic cables and uh, copper cables between cities is just, um, it's a work in progress. So. When I first went back to South Africa, which is seven years ago, um, I was working with uh, modem, 56K, seven years ago, and it started with a 256K ADSL line, and you can now get a 512, which is uh, sort of the lowest you can get. I'm not actually sure if modem's still around, actually it might still be. And then your next one after 512 is one megabit and then four megabit. And we're hoping that's the World Cup that's about to kick off. <laughs> that we'll be having 16 megabits by the end of the year. Um, so that speed issue is quite a challenge for us, especially on moving files backwards and forwards. And you know, when we do stuff between here and Europe, it affects us quite a bit. Um, just in terms of the infrastructure, um, I think Ryan commented on this when he was down in the Joomla Day in Cape Town last year. We know exactly where our cables are coming into the country. We can walk to them and go and tap the side of the house where they are. Um, we have two down the west coast of Africa, which service all the African countries, and uh, we're at the bottom. And then we've got one which was recently placed on the east coast. We have actually have two on the east coast as well. The one that's been recently laid up the east coast is meant to service for the World Cup. It's a, it's a pipe about this big, roughly, and it's meant to increase our traffic and uh, broadband access, which we haven't seen yet. So it's all got to do with the infrastructure in the country. Um, that's the first point. Yeah, so the next one is government regulation. Um, our uh, company that owns the communications is state-owned. There's no invested interest to have competition. So there's a lot of uh, regulations which are being deregulated. We have our first competition company, which is now in the country. And uh, what they're doing at the moment is digging up all the pavements, sidewalks, and roads, and they're laying fiber optics. And this is the first step in the deregulation process. I remember when I was living in Germany, I stayed here for six years. I remember when Germany's telecommunication was not state owned and then suddenly in the space of two months there were 60 companies offering telecommunication. That's what we need. Um, if we get that, we are going to see a, a huge, huge boost in our economy. Um, and then hardware. Uh, it's, a, it's a small point, um, but it's also quite a big one. Um, you guys see the iPad now. We'll see it in two years' time, for example. Uh, the iPhone came to our country, uh, when was it, Dwight? It was about, about a year ago, when you guys already had it, I think three years before us. So we have quite a bit of delay, and that ranges from computers right through to telephones to the whole thing. Okay, so that's just a bit of a comparison between the two regions. Sorry? Yeah, look, it affects, um, it affects the whole, look, we're, we're a, quite a modern country, I think. Um, there are other countries which have less than us. I mean, some of them don't even have connectivity. Um, I know for a fact there's some countries which we work with further up. Congo is one of them. Um, their internet access is intermittent. It will be between eight and four, and then it'll be off. And the next day it might not be on, and that depends on the government. So they have a, a bit of a role in, in that. So we've um, got a few videos. We'll play two, but if you want to see all four, um, 
more than welcome. It's just to give you a comparison between um, you know, what we're getting offered and what you guys get offered, um, and maybe a bit of tongue-in-cheek as well, so okay, we'll give it a go. Actually, Belgium is still one of the most expensive countries, I think, in Europe uh, when, when it comes to... Because uh, Belgacom, that you just saw there, uh, this is a, was an old monopoly and still kind of runs the show. Well. Yes? We're going to go through it. Just, this is a little example of what... Well, you get a tons of video on YouTube, you know that, but it's like a, to make our point. Okay, so we're going to focus on South Africa, two sites, and Matt is going to present them to you. All right, um, we can go on to the next slide. Um, I've broken this, the next two websites into two. One of them is a Joomla 1.0 site, this is it, and the other one's a Joomla 1.5. And I brought in the Joomla 1.0 because this has been running for since 2007. And uh, it's still running, it's very successful. This site is, um, has been migrated from a proprietary CMS into the Joomla CMS at the time when we did this uh, swap over. And one of the biggest problems was that the client couldn't add in certain things, like for example, down the right-hand side, adding adverts or even menu points. It was a huge effort to ask the company that was managing the system to um, add something into the, uh, the site. Not only was it problematic, but every time they had to change something, they had to write all the files to the server once they made a change. So it was a, a complete different way of managing sites. So anyway, we swapped this over to Joomla, and uh, the, the focus of the site is to spread the good news about South Africa, all the good things that are happening, so any bad things you hear, go to this site because it's uh, an ambassador for the good things that are happening in the country. And um, yeah, this is all content driven. There's um, quite a number of modules which in today's world, if we had a CCK, would have been a lot easier. If you see, well, everything below the, um, the main story at the top, all the way down in the whole right-hand column is driven by modules. And uh, there's no shortage of them. I think we're running about 40 or so. It's completely ridiculous. If we had K2 or uh, any other CCK, it would have been a hell of a lot easier. So let's go um, on to the next slide. All right, so just some of, some of the interesting things about this. Uh, as I said, it's a Joomla 1 um, site. And uh, we're running um, place here. It's one of the modules which we've used from Joomla 1. It tags any of the categories, and you can then stream content from those categories and keep pages fresh and all that kind of stuff. Um, the challenges that we had, um, some of them, uh, we had a SEF problem. In fact, we've had SEF problems with most of the sites we've done. 
I don't believe that most of the solutions out there are actually the correct solutions. We're now using the Joomla Core SEF, which has been working absolutely 100% since we've been using it. We, um, we got hacked on one moment in time. Um, and the reason we got hacked, I still, still don't know why, but um, since then we've removed any reference to Joomla um, so that it cannot be picked up that it's a Joomla site. Um, all the CSS has been moved into um, one file, so you know, there's no problem of um, having files exposed. And all the permissions have been set so that nobody can change anything. Um, and that was due to one single hack. And we were hacked twice, and what the guy did is he dropped a whole lot of code in the site functioning normally, but right at the bottom was a whole lot of code, and um, he must have injected somehow. We still don't know why. Anyway, since, since stripping out and taking everything out, we haven't had it, hadn't been hacked since. Um, there have been questions about migrating to Joomla 1.5. Um, the first thing that we, we're probably not going to do it because the site is just too big. I think we're approaching about 6,000 articles in, in the system at the moment. Um, and the company doesn't have the budget at the moment to do it. They're sponsored by a huge bank and um, we've got to wait and see if that's going to be um, actually offered by them. So just some stats, it's generating about 70,000 users, unique per month. Um, it's sitting on a shared hosting box, which is actually quite good. Um, it's located in America. The reason we use America, American servers or European servers is that most of the servers in South Africa have a gigabyte limit. So you buy a package and you'll get a three gig limit or a five gig limit. As soon as you hit that limit, they're going to charge you per, per meg a, per, a certain uh, cost. So it can become very, very expensive hosting in, in South Africa. Hopefully that will change when the bandwidth into South Africa changes as well, but we don't know when that's going to be. Um, the system currently has five editors um, actively every day. Um, I'm not sure how many articles they're posting. It's between three and seven a day or something like that. So um, you know, the site is doing very well in, in this current form. Um, yeah, that's that. Let's go on to the next slide. All right, to date, this is um, one of our biggest projects that we've done. It's the World Health Organization for Africa. And the regional office is located in the Congo. Um, this site, um, if we had this project delayed by about a year and we had a CCK, it would have been <laughs> so much easier. Um, and unfortunately, um, we didn't have that. So we've had to work with an unbelievable amount of um, components, um, which have put a bit of strain on the system in terms of how, many, how much content they've got on the site. So basically, the, this middle screenshot is the site map. And it's half of it, as Marcus says. Um, they, uh, the, the goal of the site was to, um, let me just backtrack a little bit here. The site was an HTML classic site. They wrote the page, they uploaded it, created a link, and that was it. It was never dynamic up until we moved it into Joomla. Um, the site itself covers all the divisions that, this, that uh, WHO in Africa runs, and uh, every division is, has got its own editor. Um, the editing is still coming um, by the different editors. And on top of that, there's also lang uh, not language, country editors as well. So you have different people from countries that are going to be editing in the future as well. Um, so just a little bit about the site. It's a 1.5 version. We run, the f well, Joomfish is one of the main tools in the site. It's in three languages. It's English, French, and uh, Portuguese. Uh, we've got Docman. We've got over 3,500, maybe 4,000 PDFs in the system. Um, we're using event list. There's a menu system. Marcus will touch on that now. And we have worked with another company in South Africa that did training. Um, and they were in the Congo for three months um, teaching them how to use Joomla, um, the ins and outs, what not to do, hopefully, and what to do. Some of the challenges we had with this website, um, maybe just speak about them. Yeah. Can you go one slide back? Is it possible? Okay, here you see two things we, we tweaked or we changed a little bit. I don't know if my finger, I'm not big enough or I'm stupid. Okay, here. That's uh, the menu. This menu is a jump menu. Okay, you can select here and you will see a list of all programs that are running in Africa. And just under it you have countries. So you can mix, because that is, it is a big site, either you use the search or 
when you know where to go, you pick your country and you pick the program. Because as, you, as, as, you, as you've seen, it's quite a big site. So we had to do that. And another little complicated thing was this menu. It's a normal jQuery drop-down menu. But <laughs> IE don't understand, does, he doesn't understand when you have two lines. So it would overlap. So we had to go into jQuery, change the JavaScript, say when you go to the same, I think it's about like a thousand picks, 900 and something, if my memory is correct. When you go to 900 and some, something pick, change the div, and this is the second one, so you could do it, because it was too late to change the whole thing, and we saw that IE, and why am I talking about IE? Because uh, <laughs> the site, as it is for Africa, had to support IE6, and would you believe it, IE5.5. Yes, so it's Africa. So they have old computers that we Europeans send over there, and <laughs> no, that's, that's what is happening. And so that, that was a challenge that we didn't see coming. It just, it happened. And it was quite a tricky one. And the menu points also, you saw that it, it, we did several, several uh, releases of that menu actually. Because when the developer did it, we didn't inform him, I forgot, Matthew forgot, uh, that there were so many articles. So the menu did the thing, it calculated, but it put too many, too much strain on the server. So the server went to. That's another thing that we learned. So the specs have to be very, very uh, precise in the beginning. So those two little things, but that were quite uh, difficult to, to implement. All right. So um, I'm just going to get back onto this language and SEF issue. The guys from Jimfish helped and. Um, Prior to this, we had, um, I think it was RTO SEF in the system. And uh, this was installed, the SEF was working for one language. And the minute you switched the language, you lost the entire site. Everything broke. And uh, I was pulling my hair out and thinking, well, what, what do we do? So I just got on the phone, I got, spoke to Alex, and we, we actually ran step by step through the system just to localize what the issue was. And what it boiled down to is that if you use the the Joomla core SEF, you have a far greater success rate than using any plugin. And on a site like this, it was vital that it was SEF on three languages. And uh, yeah, thanks Alex and for, for sorting that out because it, I tell you what it would have been, we'd still be struggling to look for the, for the issue. In fact, it wouldn't be SEF, it would actually be just the normal Joomla string. Um, yeah, the cross-browser and multi-template, we've got two templates running on the system. Um, it, it, one is on the front page, and the, one, the second one is in the second. I'll just switch back there. So our front page is the one on the right. That's one template. And then we've got a, an article template on the left-hand side that, um, which drives the site. We decided to write the, uh, the home page. It's a template written from scratch, whereas the other one is a, it's actually a Joomla Arts template, I think, or Purity template, I think it is. And we've had to modify that template because there were certain elements which they wanted out of that template. Unfortunately, when the site was developed, they had chosen that as their default template. And then when the design was being applied, they wanted certain elements from that inside there. But the, the one on the right has been written completely from scratch and hopefully loads quicker than the one on, on the left. Okay, it's next one. All right, so then the launch of this site was on the 1st of February this year. It's also my anniversary. And on that specific day, we launched the site onto the live server the day before, so on the Friday. And on the Saturday, I was gone. It's probably not a good thing <laughs> when John does that. I had missed calls. I think it was about 40, 50 of them. Uh, the site had fallen over on the live server. And it was a shared server. And basically what had happened is there were too many requests to the DB. And the server had just shut the entire site down. So we learned very quickly that... Um, whatever you test on the dev server is not always going to be applicable on your live server because at that point in time we didn't know what sort of traffic we we're going to get on the site. And uh, look, we've got over 90,000 users on the site and that's almost the latest stats is 800 gigs. I don't know what the guys are doing on the site but there's a lot of traffic and I keep having to phone the, the server guys here in Germany saying, you know, 
can you guarantee me that the server is not going to fall over because these guys are phoning up saying, you know, we can't risk the site going offline, not for 24 hours, because the big boss in Africa is going to, you know, have questions. So at the moment, what we're busy um, looking at is having the server mirrored in a different country, different data center. Um, we might also be looking at, um, I forget the term now, but it's basically load balancing where you still have the system in the same center, but it's moving users to different servers. Um, at the end of the day, it comes down to a cost issue. Um, they don't seem to have any problems with it, so whatever solution we come up with, they're going to probably go with. Um, it was a good learning curve. I think um, high traffic sites, um, there was a talk earlier on of having a high traffic site on a, on a normal server. I think it was flexi content, like a shared server. I think you still need to do a little bit more investigation into traffic on a site and what you're loading and, and that sort of stuff. Yeah. I've seen, a, I've seen a plugin for it which uses the Amazon um, server. Yeah. But you see the thing, this server doesn't have many images. It's, it's, uh, it might be the downloads, I, I don't know. But um, when the server shut down, the stats that I got from the, the server guys was between 45 and 50 requests a second. And that was on the shared server. Um, I don't know what it's doing on the, on the dedicated at the moment. The dedicated server, we've got a We've got eight gigs of RAM. Um, I don't know what the processor is, but we've got uh, four 450 SATA drives. And we can have, I think it's eight megabits a second of delivery on those drives. So we haven't had a fallover yet on that. So it's, it's been encouraging. It's a very powerful server. Yeah, so then one of the biggest challenges we had was communication with the client. Um, we did everything over Skype and email. We have never met the client. Um, so it's been very interesting working like that. Um, often we would try and contact the client and the client would have no access, zero, zero access. And as I mentioned earlier on, um, sometimes the government decides to switch it off and, well, what are you meant to do? You, know, you can't do anything for a day. Um, I think that's just a political thing in the country. Um, and the, the web access, you know, when we do testing and that sort of stuff, we often get SMSs or we get a, an email coming through saying, well, we can't access the website. And they're saying, well, we can, the site's on, so it must be something local in your site. Um, so they're constantly, you know, main, uh, checking the server to make sure it's online because they've got a lot of information that the entire African continent, um, all that works for the WHO, is, is accessing all the time. Um, the whole point of the website at the end of the day was to get communication out to the African countries at a quicker rate. And we've already done the statistics, so 90,000 and then we, a couple, about a week ago it was over almost 800 gigs of traffic a month. So yeah, so that's one of the biggest projects we've done. We're, we, it's not just our team that's been involved, so there's been a couple of, couple of people. And uh, yeah, I think it's quite a, quite a good success on, on what, what's been produced. So there we go. So, um, focus on Belgium. We took that because we're not sure if we're a country anymore or whatever, so beer, okay, that everybody understands. Yeah. So, this is um, one more or less recent case, uh, less than a year, I think. So, what, uh, what was the whole thing? There's, they had a website, it's a CDCS, so it's um, it's a non-profit, uh, well, a non-profit organization, but it, that is run by government, uh, local government, because in Belgium we have a lot of governments. We have a federal government, we have the regional government, the community, community, what's community government? If you speak a language, there is a government. If you live in a park, there is another government. So we have a lot of governments. And this is a, a non-profit site about documentation. So they, they have all kind of social documentation about social issues, a lot of social issues. So they had a site, um, but it was locked. How was it locked? Every time they had to, to do a change, they had to ask 
the government to make a change and it would take like a week, two weeks. And when I mean a change is just putting content in. That was a change. So it was a little bit difficult for them. So we did what we always do. We took some pieces of paper. We started putting a kind of sitemap and stuff. We looked at the content they had. We looked at their requirements. And we came up with, um, with this. Right? This. Uh, they liked it. They liked the design. Gives a fresher look. It works with... Uh, you know what? So that's CDCS uh, CMDC. That's uh, the address. So technically, it's uh, Joomla 1.5 in the early days. Joomfish also, as it is uh, in two languages. I think there is going to be a third language added English also. I'm not sure. And the menu system was something that we wanted to look good, to have a good user experience. And uh, we'll talk about that uh, a little bit later, because we had some issues also. And uh, the challenges, yet again, uh, a CF nightmare. Matthew can say a little bit more about it. It's more or less the same that we experience in WHO sites. So you, when you have, this is not a big size, size in terms of content, right? But it has a lot of different categories and stuff because we have learned that government likes to have things categorized. They don't believe in tags or whatever. They believe in categories. So okay, clients are always right. The content was difficult, not uh, because of the difficulty of the content, but because of all the procedures to get the content approved. So it took them, I think, around about six months to get the content ready. And it was, if you look at it, really, it was a job of maybe a month. So there you have a little bit. It's difficult because you get into a budget. You say, okay, this, is, this I can do in one month, two months, and then it takes six months. So I think that's, that's something difficult to, that maybe if you work with the non nonprofit and governmental organizations, you'll see that it's, it's difficult to get there because there are a lot of people involved. So this, this, the statistics aren't so overwhelming because this isn't a site meant to be, to be seen by a lot of people. It doesn't address like the general public. It's more for the government itself and people that work with this nonprofit organization. So there's a few people on site, but it's better than before. Before they had like, I think, 10 visitors a day. And now they have like uh, 150 or something like that. So it's better. And it's not aimed to have like 10,000 visitors a day. It's not, it's not the idea. Uh, this is another project, Hospichild. So this is a, a work in progress. Hospichild, what's Hospichild? It's a nice work in progress. Um, <coughs> why nice? Because um, this is yet again a, a project for, for, for the same, same thing that we saw just before. It is a by-project that they have. <coughs> We've seen that actually it gave them the most ex best exposure of all the projects they run is this. Hospice Child, as the name more or less indicates, is a, is, a, is a site about sick children in hospitals in the region, in the Brussels region. And we have like 14 hospitals, something like that, that deal with very sick children. So the site's about that, but it is not about um, all the clinical stuff, but all the rest. So everything that's clinical, medical, don't get on the site, but information to the parents, to the people that uh, work, uh, social workers, whatever. All the rest, that if you're, actually it's, it's those are, my mind is running, <laughs> I'm a little bit nervous, sorry. <clears throat> those are projects that are quite heavy, I would say emotional, quite difficult to run, because you see like very sick children, I mean, and the parents are completely like a, they don't know what to do. So the site has to give them answers. They search for, I don't know, my child is sick. 
can I get a, a leave from my, from my job? If they have to look that over the internet, they will lose like hours and hours and hours. And the idea of this site is to aggregate all this information in one place, instead of going and look all over the different sites. And also, not only aggregate the information, but make it understandable for people. So you don't have a lot of legal chit-chat and stuff. Yeah. So this is what the sites look yet again. <laughs> the sites look uh, looks like this now. It still run PHP WCMS. Mm -hmm. Back then it was quite quite a good site. Quite we made it five years ago. It, they were happy with it. The government still talks about it. It has been uh, shown in different countries that a good pra practice what you should do with six children and the, the parents, all the information you have to give to them. Yes? So we start wireframing and you, you know, with the columns and stuff. You all know that. For the next version, we had to work with a um, uh, graphist, you know, a designer, and um, he did a lot of research trying to do this and that. It's somebody who has a, quite a lot of experience. He worked with Disney and stuff like that. He, he works in the US. And finally, we came up with this because it, it was more like, um, how could I say? It was more in touch with the reality of Belgium. OK, so you must bear in mind that even designers need to think of where they design and for who they design. So different countries, you have different designs. What is good in, in the US won't be good in Belgium. What is good in Africa won't be good in Belgium, or vice versa sometimes. When it touches, I say, some sensitive points. And uh, an example is this. This here, that you see, the light. There was a little cross here, and it looked too biblical. That's what they said. OK. So we, we had to change it, and then we changed it. And this site is uh, quite a challenge, because it has a lot of content also. It is going to be in three languages this time. So we are, you can go on. We are going to use Joomla 1.5, because uh, let's, we're good with that. Joomfish, three languages, and K2. OK, finally it arrived. So we were moaning about the other sites. We didn't have it. Now we have it. And we're going to use it because what we see is that um, the client has like um, four or five people contributing to the site. But their main problem is posting the content in because they don't know HTML. We've been trying to explain to them, please don't copy from Word. You all know that. And they still do it. So they switch to open office. It's better. But it's still no HTML. And so they wanted this, there, there. So we think that for that thing, the CCK is good for us. Because we're really talking to people that have no technical background whatsoever and are not interested. And they shouldn't be, because it's not their job. I think that with the commercial clients, you have the same. But they will do the effort to get there, because it's in their best interest. Here. They just pay to do a job. They don't care. So we really need to give them the best tools to, to do that. We think that with K2, we'll, we'll get there. So the content migration is a big one, because, um, well, we have the system. It worked. But there are a lot of tags and stuff that we need to get rid of to put in the new one. So we have this thing. How do we do it? Do we copy paste? There is a lot of content, and they're reviewing the content, also like six months now. Or do we do uh, an import with the CSV through K2, whatever? Mm. Or do we migrate the site to Joomla? That's what we did. We dumped the database. We migrated it to a Joomla 1.5. But the content is an issue for us. And uh, well, we haven't completely decided what to do. But when we find a solution, we'll post it, and we'll We'll put it there, what we did, uh, in all together as a whole, or Joomla, whatever. So why, would you, why Joomla? What will it improve? The site has been running OK. Uh, five years. It's uh, like five years on air. 
they're happy with it, the government is happy, the people using it is happy. But they want like some other things. They want to be able to announce big, uh, I don't know, like uh, Jay and Beyond, they want to announce it and say to people, come and register and stuff like that, events. They want comments, they want to put YouTube, YouTube videos, whatever. So Joomla is going to help us in doing that and especially, and this is an important point, the other CMS we were using was, it's still there, but it hasn't the community and it hasn't uh, the, the um, how do you say that, the, the momentum that Joomla has. So we need to do everything again. And here we have the tools. With Joomla, we have the tool, and it's, and it's there. And we believe that it will keep being there. Expectations, what's that? Well, it has been shown in Lyon, Canada, Geneva. That's next uh, Wednesday, this Wednesday. They are going to show it as a good example, a good practice of how to do, treat children. I said that. So they have like 12,000 users a month, which is uh, a lot or something like this. You don't have 1,000 people, 1,000 children that are really sick in the Brussels region, so it's a lot. A lot of people come in and see it. We don't know if the 10,000 users are users really looking for the information on the site. Do we have them? Yeah. So, what have we learned, Matt? You know, this is, a, I think, a big question that we all ask when we, when we do projects. Um, I like to look at a project and see what we get out of it at the end, because if you do a new project, a larger project, you've got to take that with you. And I think the mistakes that you make in the previous projects do help. So I think the key one is communication above everything else. It doesn't matter what the design looks like or what the content is or what the coding does. If you don't communicate with your clients on an open platform, and if you communicate with the, the issues that you're having or, the, or whatever, um, I think you'll have a, a better success in a project. Um, we did that with the WHO site. Um, we've done it, in fact, we do it with all the sites we do. Um, as long as you're honest with the, the client, you have a, a higher success ratio, even if the projects are gonna be late. You know, you might step over the deadline if you communicate that to the project uh, manager who's given you the project or whatever it is, um, then at least they are kept in the loop. Um, we're working on a project at the moment that's been delayed by two weeks, because we're here. <laughs> um, but, you know, as long as you communicate that, then it's no problem for, for the client. Um, I think a very important one is this KISS strategy that everybody talks about, um, and also this design versus technical selling. Clients don't expect much, you know. What they want is they want their solution on the web as quickly as possible, and the minimum of fuss. And I think we make the mistake as developers or designers or solution engineers or whatever you want to call yourself is we overcomplicate things. Um, and I think if we do that, we actually make it far more difficult for clients to make a decision at the end of the day. And this is this problem with design versus technical. Um, it sometimes happens with Marcus. Um, I've worked with, our companies worked with other designers as well. And the, the problem is that the designer goes to the client and says, okay, well, this is what the design looks like, and then comes to our company and says, can you implement? And they haven't spoken to us at all about the technical aspects of, you know, can it be done? If they had communicated, which is point number one, and come to us first, then maybe then the whole technical elements and the design implementation would have been a lot smoother. Um, and I think that is key in any project. If those three things can be combined, then you'll all have a, well, everybody will have a successful project. Um, we're working on a pro this project that we're working on at the moment um, is a classic case. The design was sold to a corporate company and there's like 10 CEOs that need to make a decision. And uh, there are, off the top of my head, four elements which they sold the company. One is an organogram. Um, they absolutely love the organogram. It needs to be dynamic. There's about 300 menu points that need to be put in the organogram. And, you know, they, they love this and that's what they wanted it to be sold on. The second thing was a, a content slider, which needed to be dynamic, heaven knows why, but needed to be dynamic. And uh, the third thing, I can't remember what the third thing was, um, but anyway, basically the approach should have been technical first, and then in this case, go with a the design thereafter. Sorry? Oh yes, the A to Z listing. <laughs> they wanted an A to Z of all their listings, and 
I don't know if anybody uses A to Z anymore. Um, but it was a bit of an interesting point, that one. Mm. So just to recap, because we, we're closing now. If, if we had um, what we, well, what we'd have liked is no IE6. Uh, where we come from, it's a very, still a very used browser. Um, unfortunately, I think in South Africa, we're looking at about 60% still um, of people using the browser. So we have to, one of the reasons we do, we, um, we do so well at what we do is we still make sure IE6 runs on, on everybody's machines. Well, the, the website runs on, on IE6. Um, it does present its problems because, um, you know, if you, if you take the newer code that uh, the developers are using in the Joomla environment, it's always nine times out of ten it's not going to work in IE6. A case with this recent website, we've actually, uh, using the front page slideshow from Joomla Works, we've got a switch in that says if it's IE6, don't show, and we've got a substitute image because we actually can't be bothered anymore. Um, it's actually becoming too much of a problem to code it. Um, CCK, I'm not going to go much into it, but if we had it a year ago or even two years ago or three, beginning of the Joomla project, it would have been awesome, really awesome. Um, and then, yeah, fast internet connection speed. We've spoken about that, but if we had that, um, I'll just give you an idea of what our company's done in the last, um, what are we in now, May? Tomorrow's June. We've done 30 projects this year already, so we're averaging about six a month. And um, if we had a faster connection, I bet we'd double it. So, and yeah, more beer and cheese. Yeah. And I would add a little something to the KISS strategy. Mm is that uh, that's something I like, the KISS strategy. Do you know, keep it simple, straight, or stupid, whatever. Hmm. I prefer the stupid version. But um, I said, excuse my French in the beginning, and uh, I, I tend to speak a lot. Maybe not now, I'm a little bit nervous and whatever, but when I'm face-to-face, -face, I'm cool. So it's a tongue. So remember, KISS strategy, but don't French kiss. And that's what I do. I use my tongue too much, I promise too much, and then I have to deliver. Hmm. That's what I've learned. So, no French kissing, just a kiss. Yes? <laughs> yeah, you can go. So, <laughs> Matthew liked that, that image. <laughs> this, this, came across this image by chance, and um, <laughs> where we are, Africa, we're the guy with the spear standing in the middle, and Europe's in the front. <laughs> it's bending over their computers, because it's crazy coming here. I think Africa's still going to get to the point where we're permanently online. But I mean, when we come to a conference like this, and we've got, I don't know, 180, 150 people here, everybody's online. To me, it's, it's a crazy concept. And uh, if we work too much, we're all going to be bent over. So you guys, just word of warning, get out there at some point. <laughs> but um, yeah, it's better to remain upright. <laughs> and the obvious that uh, we're all alike. I mean, I work in Belgium. He works in Africa. But he's more Belgian, and I'm more African. Well. I said I'm a bit Chilean, hmm. so um, we're all alike. It doesn't matter where you work, so th there are differences, but you can work together, and that we've proven it to each other and to our clients and to to you. I hope that uh, we're all alike. I mean, it doesn't matter where you work, and that's it. Voila. Thank you. You talked about um, the issue of bandwidth and how it affects you, and I can fully understand. You know, you've got huge files to to download and access, um, and you talked about having to use, to still support IE6 because you you know the user base, so many in in South Africa are using IE6. When you're uh, designing a site and building a site, do you take into account the download time? You know, the page download time as well. You know, but, you know because people are on slower connections, and so are you keeping the speeds are faster. The problem is when you go outside the borders of South Africa, we, we throttle. So internally in South Africa, if we're on that four meg line that we, that we have, you get a, a speed of downloads of about 400k. Um, but the minute you go outside of the border of South Africa, that speed drops down to about 40 to 50, um, which, you know, that, that does present a bit of an issue. Um, so th there's a lot of factors like that which you know you we, we have to discuss with the client first before before taking that step. On the international arena, like working with with Marcus on like the the uh, overseas sites, again it doesn't make a difference to us. I'll give you an example. I mean I was working at 5:30 this morning. I had to. This is a site that's going live this week on Wednesday, and again I'm going on holiday. So um, 
the hosting company in South Africa on the PHP MySQL has a two meg upload limit on that interface. The database itself is about six meg. I can't upload that as an SQL file because it crashes. So I had to do it by hand. And I got up before all of you guys so I could have the speed <laughs> to be able to do that on the South African server. <laughs> the site itself is about compressed before we extracted on the server was about 300 meg. That we all uploaded in Belgium before we left. So you know, it's these kind of challenges that we have to deal with on a, on a regular basis. Yeah, another thing that we, we learned this week, it's the second time Matthew comes to, to Brussels. So more Jay and Beyond, so he comes more, please. And uh, we're going to put a virtual machine for him in my office. Because so, as I told you, I'm Chilean, so I don't wake up at 6 o'clock in the morning. And he does, so he can do his uploads from there and benefit from the speed that we have. Well, actually, we, sorry, we, we use um, Xcloner quite a bit. Um, I think the Akiba backup guys here, um, we've been using Xcloner for like three, four years or something. Um, and what we do is when we move sites from the dev server to a live server, we extract it, download it to our PC, and then we've got to re-upload it, or we've, depending on the server we're going to, sometimes we can do server-to-server -server moves. Um, but in the South African environment, you can't because oh, this, not going to go into the issues. But basically, if we had a, a machine here, we could move it from that machine straight onto the web. And having a 1.6, is it uh, 1.6 megabit? What is yeah, um, right. your your speed? Uh, if we had that, the file, a 200 meg file, would be up in I don't know, 15 minutes, 20 minutes, where it would take us half a day, if not longer, to get that file up. So you know we really want to get a little bit more of the speed in our country. Yeah, why are you, why are you complicating your life in such a way? You said you were working in Germany here, now you're working from South Africa. I mean, that is, uh, it's nicer down there, very likely, the weather is better. Going into a bit of a personal stuff here, but I lived in, in, in Europe for eight and a half years. And um, I missed South Africa. Um, there's a lot of things South Africa has as an advantage over Europe. And uh, one of them is open space. And I'm sure if you've been to South Africa, you'll know that. Um, also, the country, it's got a very young democracy. There's a lot of opportunities happening in the country, even if people point out crime and statistics, uh, or crime as a statistic. At the end of the day, it doesn't affect that many people. I think the media blows it out of proportion. Um, and you know, if you, if you take that into context where you're living, um, you're not affected that much. Um, so why I chose to go back, um, I've got two kids. And uh, you know, I don't want to live in Europe. It's as simple as that. <laughs> if I was here, you guys would have a lot of trouble. <laughs> I take the trouble from him. Um, I was just wondering, you've talked about the challenges of developing non-profit websites. Um, are there any specific things that you um, talk about when you're selling the idea of using your development company to a non-profit as opposed to a, a profit-making company? I can speak for myself and the thing that I that they trust us with is that well, we, you have the Joomla ecosystem, as we say, and then you have the non-profit ecosystem. They have their own language, they have their own rules, they have their own things. You can't say client almost, you have to say partner, because they're a bit shocked by the client word. So those are kind of things that, that they use a lot of acronyms, as we do, CCK and stuff, but they have their own acronyms. So if somebody comes and already knows the picture, for them it's reassuring, they know, and. There is also something, there is a social fiber, do you say that? Social thing that you have, that I think we do have. And they see that and they like it. Well, that's for my part, Matthew. Um, we're, we're in a bit of a different scenario to, to what Marcus is. We actually, um, we don't sell our services as such. We get a lot of word of mouth business. Um, I think it's the level of um, templates and management of projects that, that we're experts in. Um, 
And I think we're getting a lot of business that way. We don't actively sell our services. We don't go to companies and say, hey, you need a, you need a website or a, or a non-profit. They come to us. And um, I think it's based on that. That's why we've been having a little bit more of a success than most companies. During the recession last year, we, we actually did bloody well. Um, so we picked up a lot of contracts during that period. Um, and even now, the follow through now into this year has been, uh, it's been really tremendous. So if we had to sell, it's a, it's a difficult one because, you know, first of all, you've got to get your foot in the door before you can even get a contract or get to do a proposal for a contract on an, on an NGO or non-governmental website. And um, we've done a few um, proposals like that. The problem is, is that they're always fishing for ideas and you waste your time. Um, so the way that we combat that is that we charge for every meeting, even if it's the first one. And that's when we know the client is serious. Um, and I'm not interested in wasting my time because at the end of the day, we've got, we've got a lot of pending projects coming in and we've got a lot of projects to get out. So if somebody wants to do work with us, they must be serious when they phone and then we'll discuss. We'll take it from there. And I'm so. <laughs> yeah, look, I mean, every company does it differently. So um, I, I'm on the LinkedIn group for uh, Joomla. I think it's a professional group. I'm not sure if it's a professional or the other one. And there's a lot of requests for proposals that are coming from America. Um, some of them, some of the posts like have 20, 30 of them. And then you look at the figures that they, 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 that they have in their budget, which will be sitting at like 40 to 100,000, $200,000. And you go, well, cool, you know, let's do a request for a proposal. And then you think, you know, how much time you've got to put into something like that. And then it's not even guaranteed that you're going to get the job. So I, I think it depends on the business model that you're running as a business as to how you're going to get your contracts. Uh, we specialize in templates and um, uh, project, management, project management of that project and also making sure that what system is put in place, the client knows how to use. And obviously CCK has revolutionized that because um, when uh, Flexi Content did his um, presentation this morning, we've done our first integration of Flexi Content and uh, with Flexi Access. And it's been one of the the best learning curves that we've had in terms of CCK, it's a, it's a very, very powerful system. And we'll probably adopt that and K2 as, as our, our main um, platforms to use within the Joomla framework. So, yeah. okay. Thank you. Thank you.